can the old man lead, this will be just like the ending part, can that old man lead what or operate in the new man? Yes, if you don't conquer it through what word and prayer. There's a scripture in Proverbs which says that if your strength fails in the day of adversity, it's simple, it means your strength is what? It's small. It's not an insult, it's a description of where you are, your state in Christ. So it means if a simple temptation comes and you fall, God is saying, it's not me. Your strength in the word is too what? It's too small. As biblically speaking, a Christian cannot be possessed because the seal of the spirit is what? It's on you. There is a mistranslation with that guy that the Bible said that he was possessed by demons and was you know, hating himself. That wasn't the right translation, but I won't go there because we don't have time for it. Um, but a Christian can be manipulated or influenced by the devil, which is totally true. And again, I will use the example our elder used. There will always be birds flying over your head. Eagles, whatever, whatever type of bed, you know, they will always fly over your head. You can't stop them. You can't stop them. But you can stop the bird from making a nest on your what? Yeah. On your head. It's as simple as that. You can't stop them. See, we, 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 we teach in church that God is a sower. He sows the seed. But we also forget that the enemy is also a sower. He also sows what? Seeds. The seeds is not his throwing an arrow. They are thoughts. He throws it at you and he leaves you and just watches from a distance. That's the same thing he did with Eve. She, also, she looked at it again and it looked appealing to what? To her eyes. So it's just throw that thought in you and just stands by and then watches you. The same thing, God also throw a thought into your head and just what? Watch you. But you have the power what? To choose. Either to let the old man operate or to let the, what? The new man what? Operate. Again, birds will always fly. Sometimes you don't even know how this thought came into your head. You are, you are there thinking about yourself and suddenly <laughs> some weird thoughts be thinking maybe somebody Christ should die. He's disturbing you too much. <laughs> but you were a Christian. How, how did you suddenly get this? Like, where did this come from? That is where any thought that comes, you have to subject it to the word of God. This thing, if I do it, will it glorify God or not? You know, and of course, you need to be aware of the gates to the human life. Your eyes, you go to school, you are seeing, they are teaching you, they are writing on the board. Knowledge is being imparted to what to you through what your eyes. Your ears, I'm talking to you. I can give you a wise counsel or a bad counsel. It's going into you. Your taste. You can taste something that can kill you. Your smell. Hmm, this food smells good, but it may not be good for you. You need to be aware of these gates. They are your teachers. The things you are hearing is your teacher. There is a slide in the presentation. When you have a chance, you can, you can go through it. You know, um, and then it continues with the old nature versus the new child. What are some of the differences? You know, like the key stuff, the spiritual man or the inward man or the outward man or the natural man. We're not going to go too much into it. One is solely dependent, let's say, on the works of the flesh. The other one, the fruit of the spirit, of course. One is lawless. He just does things anyhow. You cannot walk somewhere and just kill people just like that. Having the spirit of God in you. It, it is impossible. Like you, you cannot do that. How can you put a bomb in you, walk somewhere and blast the whole place? Is that alright? <laughs> you know, so the opposite of that is now lawlessness. When you have Christ, you are very loyal, you are submissive, you are surrounded what, onto Christ. So all that I'm saying is going to take time. I'm not saying right now you would suddenly become like, um, I don't want to mention a name, but maybe somebody you would re revere so much who has grown in the faith. It takes time. But you keep what? Continue with the fellowship. Continue with the apostles' doctrine. Continue with the word. Continue what in prayer, and eventually you can get to anywhere you want to what you want to go, because all those qualities they are there for you. The fruit of the spirit they are there for you, but it's up for you to grab it or to just what let it go. So we will just share a short prayer. I just want you to be in a very calm, you know, temperament. Just begin to ponder over the words. Ask 
the Holy Spirit, what are you teaching me through this word? In just a minute, we will be done. Just, just Holy Spirit, what are you telling me through this word? What are you telling me, Holy Spirit? What is that one thing that I can walk away from this place with? Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. We're praying that, Father, place your flaming sword at the gate of our hearts. Guard our hearts against all the schemes of the evil one. Grant us the grace, O Lord, to crucify the flesh every day of our lives like Paul. Spirit of God, help us to grow in an ever-increasing love for you. Create, you know, um, that fresh fire. Let there be a baptism of a fresh fire in us. Fresh revelation, fresh rhema, and a new passion for Christ. I pray that you help us, you know, the, the, the grace to, to exhibit the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Not just on the inside, but on the outside as well. You can stand for the truth boldly in public. Begin to thank the Lord for that grace. Thank him for this section that he has ministered unto you. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We thank you so much for this time that you have fellowship with us. Thank you again, and let the saints say a big amen. 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 amen.